Hello everyone and welcome back to Monster Hunter Generations Ultimate Prowler Only. Last time we took on Snow Baron Lagambi G5 and this time we'll be taking on Soulseer Mizutsune G5. Once more I have already completed the quest just to see how it goes. About a 25 minute hunt. It's actually fairly nice. The worst part about it is that there is a Zenogre in the hunt. The other two monsters are just Mizutsune and Soulseer Mizutsune. Um, the issue here is that since we're using a Thunder Weapon for both Mizutsune and Soulseer, is that Zenogre is not taking any Thunder damage whatsoever. I still believe Thunder is the best element here, and again, if you have the White Fatalis Rod, you would rather use that for Thunder Element, but we haven't quite gotten to White Fatalis yet. This is also a decent hunt for status. If you want to use Blast or something like that, I believe it's pretty good here. Again, I still think Element's going to be better, even though we're not dealing any elemental damage to Zenogre. I think our acceleration once we get to regular Mizutsune is just going to be that much better. Though the fact that Zenogre is not weak to Thunder at all does help the status elements catch up. Either way, we'll go ahead and take the quest. Of course, it takes place in the Sacred Pinnacle, and we'll head on out. Alright, as soon as we get into here, we're going to first start fighting Zenogre, and same as usual, we'll get him down to 30% health, and then we will start fighting regular Mizutsune. Interesting part about regular G-Rank Zenogre is the fact that he has a little bit more projectile-based attacks. You know how Thunder Lord was augmenting his melee attacks, like making them a little bit larger? Um, regular just G-Rank Zenogre here actually shoots out Fulgur Bugs whenever he does some regular just, you know, hip checks and stuff like that. That should shoot out a Fulgur Bug too. And of course when he is charged, he'll shoot out more. It makes you have to play a little bit more carefully, especially against the hip checks where, you know, you might be in front of him when he does it and he might not quite reach you with the melee hitbox, but he does reach you with the Fulgur Bug. So it is something to keep in mind. Of course, we're still going for the head and the leg, so that should be fairly simple. And we're just building up for our buffs right here. There's the hip check coming out. Remember, don't be too greedy. Just kind of let him do his attacks. He's a very paced monster. And the fact that, you know, he'll do his attack, he'll slow down. He'll give you a chance to attack, and then he'll go into his. It's a very, you know, traditional turn-based fight. Right now he's charging up, so we'll go for the face as much as we can. Since he is not Thunderlord, he does not start charged. I think you can tell that, though. And he doesn't charge very quickly, so you'll have a couple of phases before he'll actually charge up whenever he does a little charging animation. We'll get behind him here. I'll just do a little pounce. Of course, that does wind pressure. We've seen that before with regular Thunderlord as well. And we'll go for the back legs. Back legs are also nice damage-wise, and whenever he is charged up, I believe it is the same as Thunderlord. His back is also a decent hit spot. You can actually be a little aggressive here. We get the flinch on the charge, which is pretty nice. Go for the face there. A couple of hits. He's going to do some paw slams. He should charge this next one. It's going to be similar to Thunderlord, where it will have a slightly larger hitbox because it is charged up. But he is slower. That is the trade-off. Dodge into that little tackle there. He's going to go back into charging. He might actually get the charge off here. You see the Fulgur Bugs kind of swarming around him already before he even started charging again. So that means he's probably fixing to go for it. And even if not means next time he for sure will get it. It's a little tail flip. Punish the legs there. Puts the legs in a decent spot for you to punish. And it's very telegraphed, so you can easily punish it too. I actually dodged the hitbox there. It's a very tight hitbox from the charged paw slam. There's a hip check once more. You see the Fulgur Bug coming out of it. it. has a weird curve too. So it doesn't just go straight. It's going to curve out, so you're not completely safe if you're off to the sides. He's going back up. He's going to do the run. I believe this is actually the charging run, so we'll ready a Mega Boomerang here. Never mind. It was not. That might be a high rank only thing, then. Um, if you've played, I think Rise 2 has it where he does the run into a charge. I don't know if that's a Gen 5 thing where they made him do that every time. It is a General Zenogre thing, though. You see him starting to charge here. Do not have Go Fight win, so we'll just kind of keep attacking here. Unfortunately, we did waste the bar on that first Mega Boomerang, but I think we'll be fine. There's our go fight win. Little too late for that, but that's okay. I'm going to back up into the Fulgur Bug shot. Do one to the left, one to the right. I don't think he can mix that up, but I could be misremembering. I did just fight him, so it's a little sad if I am, but... Oh well, it's not too terrible. As long as we're positioning correctly, we should be fine. Also, at some point during our long journey, we did actually unlock Vase of Vitality. I don't remember when but i did go ahead and equip that over herbhorn on our healing cat and then i traded out uh I believe dung bombay for uh vase of or sp horn actually not vase of vitality 
I don't remember what monsters specifically unlock those. I think Volvodon unlocks Face of Vitality. And SP Horn, probably something like Viserios. It's one of the newer monsters since it is a um, new support move. Or, yeah, new support move, not a new skill. Skills are always just unlocked by level. All right. There's a hip check there. Go for the face and the body since it is a fairly open spot there once he does the hip check. And the best thing you can learn is just which hitboxes or which hit zones are more readily available after each attack and which side of the body you want to be on when an attack comes out. Since we have adept dodges, it's a lot easier. If you're using something like an artful dodger, um, a collect cat or something like that, you're going to have to worry about positioning a lot more and timing your dodges. But for us, we can just dodge into it and be just fine. I believe the front legs are also a decent hit zone whenever he's charged. They're still not a weak spot, I believe, but they do work pretty well. And especially in older gens where it's maybe not as important to go for a weak spot all the time, especially because you don't have damage numbers right in your face, so you don't feel obligated to. It might be something you want to go for, especially for the part break, so you can get more parts from him. Go ahead and spin here to reposition. There's hip check, so we'll go ahead and just punish him there. There's a little tail flip. Again, very largely telegraphed. So I don't really feel too greedy actually playing very close and aggressive to him because he is going to just kind of telegraph those attacks. It's not terribly difficult to position out of the way of either. There are some attacks that, again, we do have some issues telegraphing or not telegraphing, but moving out of the way of because they're fairly wide. And especially when we get to Soul Seer, he's going to have a lot of just wide sweeping attacks that might not look like they're going to hit you, but they will because the swirling stuff. It's a very interesting uh, thing. It's actually going after Benkai here, so we can keep throwing a bunch of boomerangs out. He's going to go ahead and flinch from that, so we'll actually punish the head there. There's the tail flip. Again, the tail flip, you cannot stand at the back anymore because he will shoot out that Fulker bug. Let's charge Thunderpaw. There's another one. Throw a couple of boomerangs there. See what he does. He pops backwards into a thunder or fulgur bug volley. He did not shoot that at us. It was greedy because he could have aimed that at us, but he didn't. So we're actually going to get the damage off. All right. Two more boomerangs there. Need to reapply our big boomerangs. We actually got a flinch, I believe, from my part break on Zenogre there. All right. This is also greedy, too, because he can fairly easy follow up from his tail flip. There's a little thunder crash. I believe we're fine though to actually avoid that he doesn't pull that out very often at all it's kind of his big super attack and this is also similar to it uh this is similar to regular thunder lords just charging up and exploding except he doesn't explode it just kind of shoots lightning all over the place it's not that threatening can be bad if you start a mega boomerang that's what i did in the first hunt where i started a mega boomerang and the thunder just happened to appear where i was standing i believe it is similar to karen where it's always the same so just as long as you, you know, learn where they actually appear, you can fairly easily just avoid it and actually get a good strong attack going off. We break out of his charge there, which is nice. So we'll get the um, downtime of him actually having a charge again. That'll be great for us to throw some mega boomerangs at him. And that's really what we're working on right now is just building up more gauge. We're not really too worried about doing maximum DPS here. Just trying to stay for longevity. Go ahead and do a spin into the leg. We're getting knocked down, so that's good. I will happily use a Mega Boomerang for that. Again, it is nice to be able to save for Go Fight Win, but you're not always going to be able to do that, and especially for a monster like this where he's not terribly tough. You know, he's just a regular Zenogre with a multi-monster health, so it means he's going to have less than just a regular Zenogre. Uh, it's not that terrible. It is nice that we do have the Mega Boomerang because... That doesn't use element anyways, so we're not using the Thunder Element, or we're not missing out on Thunder Element. Let me say it like that. Whenever we throw a Mega Boomerang, we're just using the poor, or pure raw stat of it, which is not terrible on the Legia Anchor. Um, we don't get the Purple Sharpness bonus that we would have if we had the old Fatalis Rod. But it's not the end of the world. Again, 25-minute hunt, a little over. It shouldn't be too terrible. I think the best part is it just because it is so short, is just because, you know, it's regular monsters and then Soul Seer and not just Furious Rajang, Savage Devil Joe. And we've already gotten Mizutsune to show up, so we know that Zenogre is down to 30% health. He's going to do a volley into a tail flip. Go ahead and throw one more boomerang out. He's going to do more Fulgur Vogue volleys into tail flips. That is just fine with me. Of course, we still have our earplugs. Earplugs are actually really nice in these Deviant Hunts. 
especially with the multi monsters because you now just kind of can ignore the other monster at range of course you still got to be careful and make sure he's not aiming for you you saw the big massive lightning thunderbolt there that we would have gotten hit by i believe mizutsune hit us first if the monster can close distance quickly then earplugs won't have as much of an effect but it is nice to just be able to more ignore the monster as soon as it spawns in because normally it takes them a bit to actually realize what's going on and actually uh, roar. We're actually fixing to lose an acorn. Let's not do that. Gotta go fight win at the perfect time. Thank you, Cat. I would have actually activated my own there just to go back up to full. But looks like I might not have to. We'll see how long we can keep this going. Remember, we do not have the dummy skill diva from Double Cross. Since we are not using DLC skills or anything like that. We don't have weakness exploit either. That's kind of part of the challenge here is doing this when maybe you can't get that stuff anymore and showing that it is possible, even if it does take a little bit longer. Um, weakness exploit isn't as effective on some hunts, notably Red Helm G5, because it's just a bunch of Red Helm. Yes, it would be very effective against Furious Rushing, but that's only one of the monsters there and he's already taking a bunch of damage anyway, so you don't have to worry too much about that. And Snow Baron, I believe, is also just not a great hunt for weakness exploit because it's only really the head and you're not hitting that a lot. You're going to be piercing through, probably hitting the arms or the back as well. So it's not the complete end of the world to not have weakness exploit. It is a very nice damage bonus. We also do not have ranged attack up. I believe that adds a 1.1 times multiplier to your ranged attack. Not much. It's only 10% more, but it is fairly nice. I don't know how it stacks with other buffs. Um, if, you know, it actually multiplies that way too. If it is, that would be nice. I don't think so though, but it's not, it, it, it helps. The extra little buffs you get from the DLC skills will help you out a lot. And especially if you have the special, um, element stuff that only costs two instead of three of element attack up. And I believe it raises your element a little bit more than just regular element attack up. I believe it, it's the similar uh, situation to hunters actually. So you have element attack up for hunters, and that is just a base. It raises your element attack. Then you have specific thunder attack up, ice attack up, fire attack up. That will raise it more. Um, and you can get like fire attack up plus two. I believe you can get element attack up plus two and stuff like that as well. Element attack up is obviously going to be less for the same skill cost, just because, you know, it's raising all of the elements and not just a specific one. So more effective if you're like playing a gunner weapon that has multiple elemental shots. I don't think multiple elemental shots are really decent here in the older games. Um, in World, it was really nice. A specific niche scenario is like using the Elytrion light bow gun to fight Elytrion because you have... This is a little greedy. Hopefully we don't get punished. We did get punished. We lost an acorn. I am just kind of rambling here. But you could actually um, use your Elytrion light bow gun to use fire and ice shots to clear the DPS check for the Eschaton. However, there is no element attack up skill in world. So that's not really a thing. Uh, you would just build for a fire and ice anyways. I, I don't think you would even worry about that because just building purely for fire and ice is better than going for all element attack up. I don't even believe they stack, actually, and that's why it's not good, but skills are much more scarce in the older games, so you're not going to waste a bunch of stuff on element attack up that doesn't really give you as much use as thunder or ice attack up or whatever. And the same thing for cats. You're using actually less skill cost just because of the only raising one elemental stat, but it is very nice. And I believe how you would probably want to do that. I'm getting clipped by this water beam so much. That is not great. I'm not paying attention to Mizutsune. You can show how little I actually am respecting these monsters. Alright, we gotta dodge here. Be careful. Um, what was I gonna say? I don't remember. Something about element attack up. But yeah, it is nice. Oh yeah. What you would want to do is probably have separate cats. You don't want to have to teach the elemental skills each time because remember, you can only get two teaching slots. And since they are specific DLC skills and you have to get the cats from someone who has double cross or has save edited them in, it's not the most efficient. Um, so you would rather just have multiple cats. And if it's a monster that is, say, stronger against fire element but weaker to water then you'll switch to the cat that has the water skill i don't remember what it's called i believe fire boost is called mega flare um and that's about it i don't remember what the other ones are called but they're fairly nice 
Um, and since changing cats is just as easy as uh, changing your weapon, as long as you have the cats built, it shouldn't be too difficult. The worst part is just the preparation for it. But I think that's fine. I don't know how much it actually boosts damage in the long term because I've never actually had all of the skills at once. Granted, I can now, but I'm not really too worried about it. Um, it it's helpful in online play, of course. Keeps your damage up when you're not having your Palicos just constantly support you with stuff that lets you spam a bunch of moves for very cheap. But again, it is a nice thing if you do have the ox access to that. I was going to say access. Options and access at the same time. That doesn't make much sense. I'm going to look to apply piercing here. All right. You're going to tackle there. Hopefully you don't hit me. Here comes a paw slam. He's not going to charge it or anything because he is exhausted. Go ahead and do a spin. I could have probably thrown a Mega Boomerang at some point, but I am just kind of rambling here. We get a tail cut on him. I actually got a tail cut on him in the first hunt, too. Fairly easy tail cut since you are just going for the back legs. You'll be piercing them anyways. Dodge into that. Rotate around here. He's probably going to enrage at some point. I'm going to risk this. Because if we can get you down, I'm going to aim for the legs. It's going to be better hit zone wise. He should be going down at any point. All right, you're going to roar. I can ignore that, though. I think one of the bigger things also is that since you don't have too many skill options, I'm fixing to die again. Um, you have to pick. So you're not getting too many. So it's just completely ignoring me. It's an a. This hunt is not terribly difficult. Again, I'm just not paying too much attention to them. Um, you have to pick and choose. So you, you can't do like range attack up. It's a two cost. And then your weakness exploit, which is another two costs. You've got Boomerang Pro. Then if you want more critical skills, you have to apply those as well. You'll have to pick and choose that. And then you lose some utility options as well. It's not as bad for Bomber Cats because, you know, you can forego air plugs if you absolutely want to. Because you can just adept dodge stuff. There goes Zenogre finally. Um, but it is nice, again, to be able to get Mega Boomerangs and stuff out with air plugs. So... If you really wanted to min-max it, you would say, okay, so this fight really goes better if I can throw a Mega Boomerang out because I don't really get much other options. Uh, say something like Tigrex or Rajin. They're very quick monsters. Tigrex is a little bit more predictable with stuff, and you can actually get it ranged because he jumps back, I believe, for his roar. He might not, but it's fairly easy to close distance that way or actually gain distance um, and punish him that way. So a lot of nuanced stuff that you have to figure out whether or not you want to do it. And you could have multiple cats for that. You know, this is my Tigrex cat. This is my Nargakuga cat. This is my Altel Kaw cat. Um, and again, I, I, it is a shame that it got the stories treatment. Not quite stories. Stories got like new monsters and stuff in Japan. Um, but, you know, I mean, I don't really think there were even that many skills hunters didn't get, if any from the DLC and they really did just leave the cats out to dry you know some of the best skills if not the best skill weakness exploit was just not there because they didn't keep releasing cats yes I do know that you know um double cross was released like a year earlier than GU in fact there were thoughts that GU wouldn't even come over which was a little sad that's why I actually imported GU or not GU double cross you don't have to import GU but, you know, just interesting stuff to think about. All right. You're going to hop. You're going to enrage. I'm going to go ahead and be greedy here. We should not be one shot uh, by Mizutsune here. Even if we take a hit, we'll actually knock him out of the air. So that's pretty nice. We'll pierce. It's not a very long knockdown, though. But we'll try to pierce the head in the back fin. He's going to spin. Dodge with it. Make sure we don't get hit. All right. Here comes the double attack here soul seer will do the same thing except soul seer is larger so we'll have to be careful of that as well whenever he comes out all right bubbles something to remember is that mizutsune does not lose his bubbles whenever he is exhausted he can still shoot those out i believe his water beam is disabled though couple boomerangs there doing a tail flip upwards do a couple more attacks and then see what he does next i believe his face has been broken one time because it looks a little chipped and discolored all right, there we go. Little greedy there, but we will dodge it. Couple of boomerangs at the tail, and Mizutsune has a lot of really good hit zones. So at any point, you can really reach something, whether it be the back fin or the face or the tail. And I believe the arms are also fairly decent. We'll be attacking the arms a lot more when we get to Soul Seer. 
Um, I, I'll actually have to cover him a little bit more in detail because this is the first time we've seen him. All right, go for a spin on the tail there. He's going to turn around, look at me. And just for reference, we killed um, regular Mizutsune last time around the 15 minute mark. All right, here's that attack. We're going to back away, disengage, hard disengage with the roll. You can probably attack out and then adept dodge the second attack there, but it's just easier to hold back hard and then get away from it. All right. He's just doing a side swapping tail sweep there. Or body sweep, I guess. He uses his whole body for that. Let's see what you do next. Here comes a spin. Actually did not hit us at all, even though the uh, model went over us. It's surprising. All right. He's going to just kind of growl and taunt. More boomerangs there. Here comes a spin. Just shooting out bubbles too. Very similar to Zenogre, actually. Uh, his projectiles are obviously slower and they apply different elements, but they do kind of have that augmentation to physical attacks that's interesting. All right, back up. He's going to back up too, so I'll actually punish that. Boomerang out. He's going to spin around for a water beam. We won't get clipped by it this time. We'll dodge into it. I do also find it interesting that it shoots from the top of his mouth. I don't know how that works anatomy wise, but it is an interesting thing. It doesn't shoot from like the very center of the bottom. It's like there's a little hole in the top of his mouth that he shoots it out of. All right. Two boomerangs here. Well, that's left. He's just going to taunt once more. He usually always taunts after the little jumping spin that he does there. It's kind of a super attack. So you can actually punish that fairly simply. We'll dodge here. If you see his head going into the air, he's probably readying a water beam, and you can hear it through the audio as well. He's doing the double again. Going to be a little greedy and try to open this with a mega boomerang. There we go. Good. Going to jump to the left. Now to the right. Lay a minefield of bubbles. We have one level of bubble blight on us now. This will increase our evasion frames. Does not matter for adept cats, but it does actually matter for hunters and um, palicos that are not using adept. Or prowlers specifically. I don't know how that kit works with um, actual cats. I don't even know how their iframes work. Really? I know they dodge stuff sometimes if you give them artful dodger. It's very weird. I don't know how their timings work. Right, we'll dodge here. Dodge to the left. Couple of bubbles. Punish the face there. We'll actually dodge into the back. I didn't think it would sweep that much. I was actually trying to position out of the way of it. Disengage here. Punish the tail. It's not really disengaging because he does just end up right next to you when he finishes the or finishes the attack anyways. But that's what you're trying to do. Doing the best you can to get away from him. There's a spin. Another one. Couple of bites forward. Go for the tail. Now he is probably exhausted or going to be at some point. There's another knockdown. Unfortunately, we hit the bubble mine. All right, here comes the spin. We've got to go fight win again. We might look for a chance to use that. Perfect opportunity. Perfect timing from our cat. They've got good timing sometimes, and sometimes it's not that great. But you'll notice it a lot more when it's really good. All right, just throw a couple of boomerangs out here. We'll dodge to the right as he looks at us, so he has to offset his attack once more. Goes completely over us with the body attack. Perfectly fine for us. I don't know if that goes over hunters or if it misses them. I want to say probably goes over them. Well, going over and missing is the same thing. If it hits them or goes over them, probably does go over them because that is a way to dodge it. But it might not. I don't know. I don't know if they thought about, you know, making specific attacks that prowlers could dodge easier than hunters or if it was just make hitbox smaller and call it a day. I mean, either way, you know, the, the effect is the same whether or not they intended it. Cats in general do just have an easier time dodging some attacks. They have a harder time, too, sometimes because they don't have a Superman dive. You do have to expend gauge for a uh, soothing roll or something like that just due to the fact that you are um, not available to have. If I can speak here, I'm not thinking correctly. Um, if you don't have access to a cat with go fight win using it for you and it's not free because there's no access to um skills free skills that give you iframes let me say it like that 
that's the whole point I was trying to get to. I took the most roundabout way of getting to it, but I finally got there. Legend of the Water Beam there. Yeah, this is taking us a little while, but again, I'm not trying to be the most efficient. I'm sure Mizutsune is going to go down pretty quickly. He's fairly frail. Throw this boomerang out. Pierce down him. And there we go. That's like the third aerial stun we've got on him. So that <laughs> doesn't happen too often, um, but it's weird that it happens three times in a single hunt. Go ahead and cover him up. And same deal as before. We'll go ahead and gather some ballista shots. I have looked all over the place to find damage numbers on these. I still don't know exactly. I want to say they're 100 each, which is pretty nice for cats to have. Uh, they could be like 60, though. They might be 50 per bolt. I don't know how specifically it works. I do believe you shoot two of them out. Some games you only shoot one. Really depends on what ballista you're using and stuff like that. But it is still probably better damage wise, especially because I believe it ignores hit zones. It might not ignore hit zones. I believe it does though. All right, we'll go ahead and set up at the ballista here and Soul Seer will just kind of appear. This is just a single bolt, so. Um, I, gu I guess it's only a single bolt. I don't know. I don't remember how it works. All right, and he'll drop in right here. We'll just kind of start firing away. It does shoot two out, so I, I, I think it's, I don't know. I don't know if it's multiple hits or whatnot, or if it's just model of two and it, you know, hits for double damage. I don't know. I don't know how it works. All right. He's actually attacking, so normally... He'll go into this, but he actually started attacking there. In fact, in the first hunt with him, he just kind of stood there and let me, you know, unload ballast ammo into him before he actually took aggro. So weird AI sometimes. Can't really expect too much from older games in that regard. I'm going to go ahead and uh, we're fine, actually. We're going to get another soothing horn, healing horn, health horn. All right. Dodge around here. We're going to wait for him to bubble up his arms, which is what he's doing right now. His arms are hard. His tail is hard. It's not right now. He obviously softened it up. Um, and how that works is it really just dries out. He actually shoots out fire attacks, too. So if you fought Apex Mizutsune or Violet Mizutsune, it's very similar. Uh, that's what they're based on. It's a very interesting thing that they really like the... I guess it is just kind of a weird thing. Kitsune, it's fire. I don't know. Is it fire based? I'm thinking of nine tails, not any specific thing. Um, it is a very common thing for Mizutsune to just have fire if it's a variant as opposed to just, you know, being water or something like that. I thought it would be pretty cool to see like a lightning Mizutsune or something like that. We could have had that in stories too, but no, they took that out. All right, here comes the attack. Into the other one, very similar to regular Mizutsune. I'm fixing the faint, actually, so I need to be careful. Here comes the swirl. It's one of those attacks that has a very large hitbox, even if the model isn't that large, so you've got to be careful. There's another little tail flip up. And remember, since the deviant versions of the monsters are larger, you're going to have to account for that whenever you dodge. So positioning is going to have to be a little bit wider out. Comes another little swirl. It will recoil after it, so it gives you a chance to punish, which is nice. See what he does here. Just a little bite. Missed us there. That's good. Here comes another swirl. A lot of his wind-up attacks are better to dodge. Um, because they can do a lot of damage, so you want to secure the dodge on that. You can position out of the way of them depending on where you are at. Um, but sometimes it is just safer to, you know, hunker down and prepare to dodge it. Here comes the jumping spin already, so we can actually punish this here. We'll go for the legs. And how Thunder Element works here is that it's not as good, I believe, as Dragon whenever he's just in regular state. But remember, when he's just in a regular state, his arms and his tail is dried out. So, yes, Dragon Element is doing more on the harder parts of the monster. However, you're still bouncing off of them, which is not good. It means your raw damage is going to be terrible in that specific spot. So while you might be doing decent dragon damage, you're doing terrible raw damage. You might as well just go for the face in the back fins. I do believe in standard state, whenever he's not enraged or something like that, the head still does take more damage from dragon, but it's not that much more. And you might as well just wait for him to get enraged because it is a jeering monster. I believe there is a weird mechanic. It's always been in the game where the closer the monster gets to death, it will enrage a lot more. So closer to the end of the hunt, he'll just be permanently enraged. And even when he's not, 
when he bubbles his arms, he can do that. I believe when he's not enraged, you know, you're still getting decent hit zones. And of course, once you break the legs, you'll get a topple for that. So he can throw your Mega Boomerangs or what have you. Did a little bite there. His little tail flip upwards. He actually comboed that. He can do a little bit more than regular Mizutsune here. We're going to have to Soothing Roll out of this attack. If we can get it in time, we cannot. So again, very similar thing to when we're trimmered. We cannot immediately Soothing Roll there. I was mashing. Why? It's a weird thing. You can kind of semi Superman dive in that. I believe you do not get any odd frames, but it will throw you pretty far because you are in bubbles. Um, it is an interesting thing. You can get cornered and stuff like that. It's very cheap feeling. Again, I don't know if they intended for you to not be able to use a support move immediately after you've been trimmered or something like that. I'm not sure why that's the case, especially considering you can still attack and stuff like that. I don't know if it was a balancing thing. I don't know why it would be. Um, maybe it's to prevent you from using something like a cleanser, but I don't think you can use cleansers as a hunter if you are out of it. So I, I don't really know. And that wouldn't really even matter for trimmers either. It it's a very weird mechanic. And I'm sure they took that out in world. Prowlers aren't in world, obviously. But if they were, I'm sure it would not be a thing just to streamline the process. Because it is weird to just not be able to do one single thing. It's not like you can't attack or anything like that. It's like you can't just do the one thing that you could do to actually just get out of jail free. I'm, I'm wondering if maybe you can't use Hunter Arts either to get out of that. That might be another thing as well. Maybe just so you can't use Absolute Evasion or something like that. Here comes the Swirl. I, I don't know. It's weird. All right. Boomerang at the face there. He's going to bubble up his legs. So we'll get some good hit zones there. And since he can bubble up his legs, he's going to have more access to even better hit zones, which is really great. Makes the hunt go a lot faster. Now, we are already at 30 minutes as opposed to the little bit over 25 that it took me before. But I think you can tell why. Uh, we went on a ramble about element attack and we're not even paying attention to the monsters before. So that means we're attacking less. We're not getting as much gauge. The less gauge we get, the less Mega Boomerangs we're using. So we're not going to be getting as good of a time. And the reason I stretch or stress time so much is that cats, again, are not the best. Many people kind of exaggerate how bad they are because they're not great in speed earning. You have to build up gauge and stuff like that to even be able to do decent damage on par with hunters. But in standard play, it's not that bad. Um, you're going to be doing a lot better than some hunters that are still new to their weapon. The biggest thing is that it's easier to pick up and fairly easy to master. Kind of. You still have to master the monster, but that's kind of a thing with every weapon. Um, the thing is your skill ceiling is much lower than something like Valor Heavy Bowgun. Valor Heavy Bowgun is a very easy to use weapon to get a lot of results with. However, some people just don't enjoy the ammo management and stuff that's required to play it. It is fairly high risk as well because you don't get to take as many hits. Yes, you can position pretty easily with it because of the little run you get. But, you know, this is a very cozy weapon. I really enjoy this weapon. Of course, this is what got me into the series just because you could play as the cat. I don't know why that was a drawing point for me, but I thought it was pretty neat. In fact, I believe the whole reason I got the game was for the Zelda DLC, which I didn't even ever end up using. This is like... Uh, Toon Link, I believe, and use the little Wind Waker as the weapon, but I never even ended up doing that. Um, I don't remember why. I guess the weapon wasn't that good. I, I really don't remember. Oh, yeah, it was back in Generation, so there's no Trainsmog or anything, so the armor wasn't that good. That's probably why. A little Tail Slam there. That's one of the other attacks that winds up pretty large. Very large hitbox as well, so you want to try to dodge it if you can. If you're far enough away, though, you can position out of the way of it. Don't wait too long to position, though. Because you will be hit by the very wide hitbox it does have. All right, see what he's doing here. He'll flip upwards. Throw a boomerang at the face. Even a little attack there. We'll wait and see what he does. I'm waiting for him to turn around. Since right now we do not have the best option of hit zones here. Here comes a slam. That is also a bit delayed from when the hit comes out and when he jumps in the air. So you can actually dodge a little bit too early. That's why you want to practice the timing on that attack. You get a little bit more timing whenever you do the lower levels and you're not taking as much damage. Um, and if I had done this immediately after finishing Soul Seer, um, G1 through G4, then yeah, I would have probably had a little more practice. It's been 
well over a month since I actually did the um, quests for this one. So the VOD channel is a little weird because some of these I've done very long ago, but I released them at the same time I actually released the full video. So it's it, it's very interesting to say the least. I say that a lot. This is a very odd episode. I apologize. All right, we'll see what he does next. Just kind of growling. Probably could have gotten a Mega Boomerang out there, but I'm fine with doing some just standard damage here. All right. He's doing that attack. He's going to turn to me, so I'm going to get ready to move. He's doing the Zenogre Walk. A little trying to intimidate me. But he actually combos it with an attack there. This is the Sweeping Water Beam. Just dodging under it. Doesn't even hit our hitbox, so we... Don't even have to adept dodge and attack out of it. We can just kind of keep going. It's going to growl. A couple of boomerangs there. We'll go ahead and do this. A little greedy, unfortunately, but we're fine. We have um, Palico Rally. So we're good to just kind of position out of the way of them and try to use piercing here. There we go. It's doing the bubble toss. Not into the jump, actually. And still shoot bubbles, of course, whenever he does his melee attack, like I said before. Now, this is a very interesting, similar to, I believe, um, what's it called? Silverwind. We've already done that one. Where he'll double jump before he does the roar. It's a very interesting quirk he has. That does kind of time together with Silverwind. At the very least, I think so. He did it twice there. That might have been a weird, another weird AI thing. Um, but I believe I've seen him do it multiple times before. All right, we get a knockdown here. We might go for the tail cut. I mean, not really making a big deal out of it. We will go for the tail because it's right in front of us and it's going to deal the best damage. As opposed to just piercing through the back legs and stuff like that. Chest, I believe, is still hard. That's just classic Mizutsune hit zones. Here comes the spin. Dodge into it. Hard disengage. Did not. He actually swept around enough to actually hit us. Here comes the sweep. Very easily could have lost a, an acorn there. This is a little greedy, but I think we're fine to follow up with it. Still not quite getting a flinch there. All right, be careful. Dodge to the left. He's doing the spin bubbles. All right, a couple of boomerangs here. Backwards hopping. Doing another one into the spin. Go ahead and combo this. Try to hit those legs, maybe get a knockdown. I'm not focusing on the legs as much. Maybe that's why it's taking longer. Obviously, it's taking longer because I'm just talking about random stuff. Which is the third time I've said that. All right, here comes the slam. Very nice dodge. One, two, and spin. It's fine. We'll go ahead and combo this one as well. I think we'll just do this one into the face. Since it is right in front of us. Spin. Boomerang out. Dodge right. From the fire bubbles. Those fire bubbles are actually fairly strong knockback wise too. It's not like the regular Mizutsune bubbles where you'll just flinch and get the helmet. It will actually explode and throw you back from... Similar to attacks that are like very strong, like Astalos. Um, the black hole, if you run into it, will just throw you back very far. Throw you into like a weird windswept animation where you're spinning out of control like an asteroid fixing to hit something. Weird comparison, I know, but oh well. All right, be careful. Boomerang out. Wait for him to attack. Here comes the slam. Wait a little bit longer. Again, it is a little delayed there. Go ahead and spin here. It's gonna enrage here, I believe. Never mind. Ouch. You can see the animation there. Alright. Here comes the big jump combo. It's gonna, probably gonna hit us here, so we'll just try to dodge out of the way. So we do not have enough bar for our um, Mega Boomerang. Get a leg break, though, and you can see the saliva coming out of his mouth, so you know he's in, um, exhausted, not enraged. He was enraged because his face was red, but the saliva will start appearing before he actually goes into his exhausted state. We're just going to rapid fire some boomerangs here. Maybe get some gauge for him to slow down and let us hit him with Mega Boomerang. But for now, we'll just go for this. We'll hop right over that bubble. That's fine with me. Here comes the slam. All right, what you doing? Hopping twice into the roar. That means he's enraged. Not a very long exhaustion duration, but he does exhaust quite a bit more. An interesting little lore thing here is that I believe he is blind. Might be only blind in one eye. I believe he's actually blind throughout the entire thing. So it is a weird monster hunter thing where he can sense his surroundings with his fire sight or something like that. 
believe it's called Divine Sight Mizutsune. Um, at the very least in the translation patch for Double Cross. Not sure what the actual um, thing is called. Um, Bolt Reaver actually has a very cool name. It's Azure Bolt Rathalos. It's very similar to Azure... Did I say Rathalos? Astalos, not Rathalos. I was thinking of Azure Astalos. <laughs> Sorry, it's Azure Bolt Astalos. Uh, similar to Azure Rathalos. It's very cool because he turns blue. Um, either way, uh, sorry, uh, carving him up, I'll meet you back at base. All right, back in the hub. First things first, I will note that I did use Dread King armor there. Could have probably used Mizutsune armor. You have to hunt it a couple of times anyways to, you know, get to G5. So you could use that for the water resistance. There are a couple of other monsters, I believe, that have fairly decent water resistance as well. So if you wanted to have the higher elemental resistance, you could have. I was just lazy and used the set. Uh, since it is just neutral anyways. Either way, the weapon, it's going to be your best water uh, weapon for your boomerang cats at the very least. It's a deviant weapon, so you're already getting more gauge gain. 190 raw, 36 water element on the um, boomerang side. You only get 28 water element on the attack side, which, okay. Especially since you are getting the extra gauge gain, but I believe the Mizutsune Parasol XR is going to be better for melee cats. White sharpness is also pretty nice well on both sides. As for the armor, it is okay, 162 high water resistance. It's the eight, so you'll be getting 16 water resistance. That's the highest, one of the highest you can get at the very least. I don't even know if it goes higher than that. I looked through the other armors, didn't see anything with nine for a single piece. So maybe, you know, you can go higher with special skills, but you're not gonna waste your skill slots for elemental resistance. And something to note is that Elemental attacks are still made up of part raw and part element, similar to your weapons. So a Rathalos might have a certain raw stat with its fireballs alongside the fire element. So even if you completely negate the fire damage, you're still taking the raw side of it, which is going to be very high in the later levels of like Rathalos or drinking Rathalos and stuff like that. So it's not a complete fail safe. It is nice to take less damage from elemental attacks, but it's not the end of the world if you're just neutral on it. Now, negative is a little bit worse. You don't want to be taking more than you have to. And since cats can make armor fairly easy, you do want to be offsetting that when you can. But it's not the complete end of the world. Your goal is to not get hit anyways. All right, now that that's out of the way, I've had some people asking about progression and specifically in the G rank. And while G rank progression isn't special in and of itself because we did all of the prep work very early on. Um, I do want to go ahead and talk about your mindset whenever you are actually starting your Palicos and, you know, starting your playthrough if you're playing through Prowler. If you're not, if you are just in G-Rank with a Hunter or something like that and you're just looking to build a Prowler, then you'll just want to find the skill pattern and there's a bunch of charts online that shows what the skill pattern and the support move patterns are. Go ahead, look through those. There are plenty of guides that show you how to do that and build for Prowlers and stuff. I'm specifically going to be talking about early prowler building and how you want to sh maybe streamline that a little bit because early on even if you get your perfect cat with your perfect patterns and stuff like that you're at the mercy of rng and the dojo skill changing so really what you're going to want early on is just stuff that will carry you along until the next goal um you can see here that some of our cats have more levels than others calamari was the first cat this is the charisma cat that they force you to hire whenever you talk to the meostress this cat is always the same on every single playthrough always has the same skills the same support moves all that fun stuff it's a decent palico no it is a charisma cat so you're already getting palico rally whenever you do use it as a palico and it works just fine for the first few small monster and gathering quests that you do until you get a decent enough fighting cat to take on the great Macau and the other lower tiered two star monsters in village i believe we hired these two cats after the first gathering quest and i want to say we used luca for a little bit just because it really doesn't matter too much what you use i use fighter cats because the attack up small is an eight you get that and you can apply it immediately and while you can't use furious until you i believe reach level five because you only have three bars of gauge whenever you start the game piercing boomerangs is okay and you can still get by just fine with your regular melee attacks and just spinning melee wise with piercing boomerangs you will not have boomerang pro this early probably 
So it's just better to focus on using your standard attacks and using your boomerangs whenever you don't have to deal with the slow boomerang throws. Chibi, I believe, was actually our first cat that was really good. You can see we used him to level 22, which is after, I believe, the level cap break. I'm not sure why he's this way. He might have been a Palico at one point. But you can see here that the two skills that you really want to have on a cat is Big Boomerangs and Soothing Roll. You can deal with it if you don't have one of the two. You can always just teach Soothing Roll or Big Boomerangs. And the goal is to have a cat like this at the very least at the end of Two Star Village. Like I said before, your melee attacks and other stuff should be okay fighting the Dromes and stuff like that. You'll have to at the very least fight Gendrome to even, you know, clear two star but there's also some other quests you have to do to unlock the faded for later on and one of those will be velocidrome so gendrome and velocidrome will unlock your soothing roll so before you even start two star village and you know defeat great mikhail and move on to two star go ahead and make sure you have a cat with at the very least big boomerangs soothing roll and then boomerang pro this one has boomerang pro i believe and that's because you want to at the very least be able to teach we actually got a really good pull with this cat, having both Big Boomerangs and Soothing Roll in the same innate skills. But you see, we do still have one teachable slot left. You'll absolutely need to have Shock Prism because there are some capture only quests during Village. There's also some during Hub too, but we were already on a different cat by that point. But for now, you want to make sure at the very least you do have Shock Prism. It's going to be the same thing. You'll just make sure one of the cats has it. Don't remember which one. It was this one. Probably why I hired Luca in the first place. Shock Prison is just a good general use trap. There are very few monsters that actually resist shock traps. And pitfall traps aren't as useful because the crabs completely avoid them. And Shogun Sienatar is one of the monsters you have to capture. I believe Nargakuga is another one. That might be in Hub that I'm thinking of, though. And you can't always use pitfall traps in Nargakuga. But shock traps work just fine. And of course, I believe we taught it Boomerang Pro. Yes, we did. So really, you only either need Big Boomerangs or Soothing Roll, and then you can teach the one you don't have on a slot or Emergency Retreat if you'd rather use that one. And then you go ahead, teach Shock Prison when you need it. You, that's why you want to have a cat that has it unlocked. And then just make sure your cat that has Boomerang Pro levels up. You can hire three different cats at this point in the game just so you can unlock those skills. Shock Prison is a little bit more difficult because you can't get it until you fight Kezu, but you just have to have it on a Palico slot. You don't actually have to use it as your main cat whenever you do fight Kezu, so you're fine to just throw it on a Palico slot whenever you get to Kezu and then teach the skill whenever it unlocks. Another reason I like Fighter Cats over something like Collect Cats is that your melee side still does some decent damage early on. Furious allows you to trigger your enraged mode, which will happen naturally sometimes as well. And for fighter cats specifically, this gives you a multi hit vault attack similar to aerial hunters. And this allows you to spam mount, which do fixed damage generally in the game, but are particularly good in low rank and also lets you land and topple the monster to get even more hits on it. While all cats can use their lunge to deal mount damage, the general motion value of that move is fairly low, so you're already missing out on damage there, and the mount status buildup on that move is also not particularly great. You can use the lunge move by just throwing a boomerang and pressing X. But this cat really works perfectly fine. It is not the most fancy. It doesn't have to be. You're in low rank village. You shouldn't be taking more than maybe 15 minutes per hunt unless you just particularly struggle against one. Um, and I'm talking about this as someone who's familiar with Prowler. If you're not familiar with Prowler, you'll probably take a little bit longer, but you don't need anything like Mega Boomerang. Is it nice to have? Sure, but you can't really apply it because your equipped moves are not going to have that many slots. You can see here that we actually only have three unlocked for Chibi here and for Texas, who is a bombing cat, and I'll get into that in a minute, he doesn't even have piercing boomerangs as a secondary skill, so he actually has to equip that on one of his open skill slots, meaning he can't carry big boomerangs and shock prison at the same time. And that's a bit more limiting. That's why we would switch to Jibby whenever we did the capture quests. But after those first two, there's maybe one in High Rank Village, but by the time you get to High Rank Village, you should have another support slot unlocked, so that's not really an issue. Now, after we had got Chibi and got him ready to be set up, we then looked for Texas, and Texas is pretty much the same story as Chibi. 
he had big boomerangs and soothing roll innately at the very least i think he did i may have rolled rng for soothing roll to actually be applied there and that's all you're really looking for if you're using a bombing cat is having those two skills on there that way you can teach piercing boomerangs and a shock trap if you do not have an ideal cat like we had a buki pretty early on so you can use them for the later on high rank village capture quests i don't remember if there are any but if there are you can use it for that another nice thing is that he had critical up large and boomerang pro and the reason i'm not talking about skill patterns here is they really don't matter the only skill pattern you need is one with two c support moves and that's just so you can have big boomerangs and soothing roll combined after we got texas i believe we just threw him on the palco slot that was not with calamari just so he could level up and then we could get to using him once he unlocked that third support slot. And then we started looking for a Buki. Now we hired these two here, Natalie and Sebastian. And these are just the base names. I didn't actually name any of them. And Natalie here, you can see, already had big boomerangs and soothing roll. And I'm going to say probably Sebastian had that as well. He did not. He probably just had a really good skill set. So for this one, it's another okay one. I believe it's a 3B skill and then 2C skill cap, which, which works just fine. In fact, that is what a Buki is. I think the real problem with Natalie here was the skills. The skills on Natalie are seven C-class skills and how skill patterns work if you haven't looked at them yet. I highly recommend you do so you'll understand a little bit more what I'm talking about. But for both the support moves and the skills, they both follow the same kind of pattern. They're going to be separate on each cat, obviously, though you can get the same type of pattern on both sides. But some skill patterns are full Cs, so you'll get seven C-class skills, while some patterns are three Bs and two Cs, like I was saying a little bit earlier. So the support move pattern can be seven C-class skills, and so can the skills, or the skills can be three Bs and two Cs. So that's at the very least fairly simple. Once you understand one, you'll understand the other. Um, but the issue here was that Natalie was just really not good on the skills. A lot of C-class skills, but there's not really too many C-class skills we need. The only one you absolutely need skill-wise is Boomerang Pro. But if you want to go for longevity, you'll need at the very least B-class skills too. And I recommend having an A-class skill so you can get elemental attack up natively and not have to teach it and waste a skill slot there. Now, Sebastian here was similar. He had two B skills and then four C skills. Now, Sebastian here was similar. He had two B skills and four C skills. And he had three B skills and two C skills on his support slots. This is okay. I want to say I picked a Buki probably because he had Soothing Roll or Big Boomerangs and ate one of them. Uh, Sebastian didn't have any of them. Another issue was that Sebastian had no A-class skills. And I really wanted at the very least one A-class skill that wasn't, you know, an A-class skill, a two B-class skills, and then one C-class skill. And you can do what Buki has here and have an one a class skill one b class skill and then three c class skills which is fairly nice just all the way around stuff you know some utility and stuff like that and then finally after enough grinding out the um, palico traders and once you reach two star you'll unlock the villages so now you'll have four times the amount of palico pools that you would have had before so make sure you do get to two star before you really start grinding out the cats but really ibuki was what we needed three b class skills two c class skills I don't remember. I had plenty of time to actually go over and let the RNG work on the move changing. So I didn't mind taking time to, you know, get a cat that might not have had the best innate skills, but at the very least had good patterns. Um, there are ways to circumvent the move changing RNG, and I'll talk about that later. We didn't have to do that because all of our cats were set up before we could even get to it because I took the time to do that. But if you don't want to, we'll get into that later. And Ibuki's skill pattern, like I said before, was A, B, C, C, C. Again, I don't remember exactly what these were whenever they were based. I could go back, but it's not that important. The important thing was that the patterns were what I wanted them to be. And that's really what you're looking for. You're not going to be able to use your ideal cat immediately because number one, you're not going to have the skill slots to apply all the skills you want. And you're not going to have all of these support slots to apply all the support moves you want either. So you can't really be too picky early on. And that's why you're building for these lesser ones. Because they're not really lesser. You're doing as much as you can with the support slots you have. Um, if you were using a collect cat or a fighter cat full time in lower ranked village and high ranked village, then you could probably get away with trying to get one with mega boomerang or teaching mega boomerang. That way you would have the extra damage, but it's not really needed. The monsters don't really put up much of a fight in lower ranked fights, if that makes any sense. 
Now, like I said before, I had plenty of my own time to go ahead and fix the skills up to what I wanted them to be. I could probably change out that other B-class skill to something like Farcaster. I haven't really needed it, honestly. I haven't really been starving for anything. I think Ibuki's been working just fine, especially considering we can't use any of the DLC skills. That's kind of a limitation I've put on the playthrough. So your skill pattern is going to be a little bit more rigid if you are using those taught skills because they have to be taught. They can't come innately. So both of your skill slots are probably filled up with damage slots instead of something like Monster Door that I like to have for capture quests and, you know, standard critical up large, though we could change out earplugs for that and then just teach earplugs if we absolutely wanted it. So if you are going for DLC skills, again, I highly recommend you look at some of the other guides people have done for just standard prowlers and G rank and stuff like that, because that'll make a little bit more sense there since you are more free to choose what skills you want, especially with the DLC stuff. And in general, your support moves are going to be more locked into what you can do. I like this set. I like having go fight one so I can just spam soothing roll when needed. And I believe before level 50 or at level 50, one of the two, you'll finally get all of your support move slots, which is really nice. You don't get anything extra in GU for your support moves. Now for skills, I believe you get two or three more skill slots to apply more skills, which is nice. But again, not needed for the base play style. The only thing it is used for is just adding extra damage or utility when you need it. So it's really up to you how you want to build your skills. This is how I've built them. There's some other stuff here. You might want to trade out nonstick fur for trimmer resist if you're following this pattern. Um, but I can drop critical up large and throw on monster door or something like that or trade out airplugs for monster door. You know, th there's a lot of stuff I can do here just depending on the hunt. And now, if you do not have time like I had now, if you do not have time to deal with the RNG like I did, I still recommend trying to build your cat with the RNG selection that you have. And I'll go ahead and just show it off real quick. Um, so you'll know what I'm talking about. And this is all pretty much covered through the playthrough throughout the various episodes. But you'll go to special training, change support skill, go to the cat you want. So Sebastian here, we would select him and you can change support moves or palico skills, select details, and then go to the one you want. You don't have to worry about the skill being locked. Before you change it, you can just select it. It'll begin special training and then it'll randomly out of this little left side um, of support moves. Pick one of them. It cannot pick the same one. Obviously, it's not even on the list. So, you know that much. And the A class skills are obviously easier to get because there are less of them. So there's less RNG. But the C class skills are a lot harder to get specifically what you want, especially because you are very specific with soothing roll and big boomerangs. So that will take a little bit longer to get unless it just lines out for you. So if we go back real quick, you can actually see there's an item slot for this that allows you to pick an item. Now, we don't have the item because I never actually needed them, but there's a couple of things you can do to get this fabled item to actually help you out. The earliest you can get it is in high rank village. Some of the prowler quests allow you to get this item, but there's also an event quest if you have access to those. And I did actually download the event quest, and this was actually for um, silver and gold right here. I was doing that earlier um, back in high rank whenever I was playing through high rank. But the quest, let's see, turnabout takedown has you hunting two geodrome in the arena. And this will at the very least guaranteed give you one, if not sometimes two feline codexes. These are little green books that you can use to actually select the support move that it will pick. You are, of course, limited to your patterns, and that's why patterns are more important than innate support moves at the start. Because, well, you can change your support move and you can specifically pick it later on. You cannot change your skill patterns, so you're going to have to be a little bit more picky about those than the skills that they have starting out. I don't remember which quest in High Rank Village gives fuel on codexes. I'll go ahead and put that here. I do believe there are some quests that have to be um, done before you unlock that. But that's a way to get it early on in high rank village. You are having to deal with a little bit more RNG. It is not guaranteed there, I believe. So it is a way to get it if you want to grind while also just letting your cat try to get the RNG stuff while you're grinding out the books. Palicos are a very similar story. As you can see here, we actually have a really good set for both of our Palicos. And I pretty much just did the same thing. Chose what skills I wanted, what skill pattern or support move pattern fit them the best, and then went after them grab them, put them together. Telcos aren't nearly as important as your main cat as they can kind of just hop around 
while you're doing your main thing. And you can see here we actually use these two up as Pelicos for the most part. We use Texas as a Pelico for a lot of the time just because he didn't have enough um he didn't have enough support slots for us to actually use the full moveset, so we had to use Chibi until then. But they can kind of just chill in your Pelico slot. I do recommend at the very least getting a Charisma Cat so you do have Pelico Rally. But until then, they're not really that important. Maybe having Healthhorn is nice, just so they can heal you a little bit more than Herbhorn. Herbhorn is not great at all, but it is some form of healing. And until we got Binkai and Yu, we were just looking for specific patterns. We got it. We taught them all that fun stuff. Again, this is really where it opens up to what your preferences are for cats. I have my preferences for Palicos. Some people will have other preferences. This does not really apply to Hunters as well because they can kind of just throw on whatever and not really worry too much about it. Um, though I'm sure they would like something like Demon Horn, Cheer Horn. Cheer Horn's actually not that useful. Well, actually it applies to your Hunter Art Puffs, but I'm just rambling at that point. If there's any more specific questions you have, go ahead and ask because, again, I'm not going into the most specific detail. I really recommend going over the older videos. I know the audio is terrible on it, but it still does give the mindset as to what I'm doing and why I'm picking specific cats over others. And again, like I said before, if you're building in G rank, ignore all of this. Just go for the specific skill patterns and support patterns that you need. Build it that way farm the event quest, get your feline codexes, and have a much easier time building. Another thing I will say, don't stress too much about level. I know a lot of people worry so much about level 99 cats, and yeah, they deal more damage and they have slightly higher defense at that level. Um, the level 99 cats are on par with the level 50 cats from Generations. I don't know why they had to rebalance the leveling. It's not really a nerf, they just rebalanced it. But it is a thing you have to deal with. I will say myself, I never found myself starving specifically for anything. Like I said before, the only skill you absolutely need is Boomerang Pro. And then the other stuff is really just up to you. In fact, you could have Boomerang Pro at the start and then another two slot skill with a level one cat. So don't stress too much about level. In G rank, I believe you're able to hire cats at around level 60. And that works perfectly fine. If you're doing deviant quests like I did, you should be getting to level 99 fairly quickly. That's what we did here. We reached the level 50 or level 75 cap, one of the two, in G rank. And then after we did the unlock for our levels at HR 35, which, yes, we reached immediately because we also did high rank deviants. And we got the HR points for that. I still didn't really find any issues there because we were immediately going up in levels anyways. And even if not, again... The most important thing is practicing the weapon and playing it well, and you won't really be starving for stuff. Mega Boomerang makes up so much of your damage in G rank that learning to use that at the right points is going to push your damage along a lot more than just leveling your cat. So I'm going to recommend this. Don't go for a level 99 cat before you actually start building. Build your cat. Use it. If you don't like how it feels damage wise and whatnot, Try to practice it a little bit more before you just start grinding because grinding gets to be a very tedious thing, especially if you're doing it the book way, which is a bit not fun. And if you're playing with other people, it shouldn't matter anyways. The amount of damage you do gain from being level 99 is not that much. I promise your gear is more important than your level. The only thing level gives you, like I've said before, and I'm really trying to stress the point is more skill slots because once you reach level 50, you get all of your support slots. So all you have to worry about is having just the extra room for skills, which is not really that important, like I said before. Collect cats are probably a little bit more picky. They like having artful dodger and stuff like that because they do not get adept dodges. That's why I like bomb cats, because they can deal with just about anything as long as you learn the monster well enough. And they are not as picky on their skills. Either way, uh, yes, I understand that. Again, that was not the most in-depth guide but i did want to ramble on about why i pick the things the way i do again if you have any more questions about it specifically go ahead and ask i do not mind answering them at all you might get a big long essay of stuff though as to why i pick stuff so please expect that if you do ask a question though some questions are fairly simple to answer i just want to help you along as much as i can with actually using prowlers because some people are surprised that prowlers do fairly decently solo at the very least 
I know 30 minute times are not the best thing in the world. I don't like them either. But if someone was using Hunter on my level, I feel like it would be getting the same amount of times because I'm just not that particularly great at the game. Either way, I hope you enjoyed. If you did, please consider leaving a comment below and maybe even consider subscribing. Until next time, bye.